so much for having us over here. Uh, we're extremely honored to be part of this panel of esteemed speakers. Uh, it, it, it's a really tough job to come after Sabu Cyril and kind of uh, make an impact, especially when it's about lunchtime and everybody's stomachs are grumbling. But So we're going to try our best and try and share our experiences and keep it as interesting as possible. Uh, I'd like to start by introducing ourselves. Hi, I'm Karthik Ayer. And I'm Praveen. Yeah, so we both are the co-founders of Happy. Um, so we're going to share with you a couple of cases uh, that we have done in design. But uh, we'd like to start with a disclaimer, uh, is that we are not trained designers. We, we both come from the advertising business. We started our own agency eight years ago. And uh, it was just our sheer interest uh, in you know, wanting to explore the design space that you know, we ventured out and started doing uh, work in the areas of branding and packaging. Uh, the one thing that we believe in, in our philosophy when it comes to design, is that if it's not broken, don't fix it. Right? So normally when people talk about design and designers, they always want to do something new, they want to change the way it is. But unless it really requires it, we believe that one must not even try and do that. Okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to share with you five examples of the work that we have done in the design space. Uh, we'd like to start with the first example that you know is an example of disruption. Uh, of a category where you know design has caused disruption has actually worked for a brand. Um, so I'd just like to give you a little bit of background on this brand. So Atagalata was a brand uh, that was actually a, a bookstore that actually uh, had a bakery within it. The, the products of the bakery were so good that the client decided to make a brand out of the baking products itself. All right, and uh, we decided to retain the name Atagalata and. The clicker is doing some galata right now. <laughs> okay, so the problem was, uh, you know, to, to go out there and become a bread brand, right? So we've, we've all grown up with bread brands that have been around, you know, uh, owned by big houses like Britannia and Modern and, and whichever in, in your local city. So here was a new player that was trying to make an entrance in the, in the, in the baking space. Highly competitive landscape. As you know, the big players own the shell space. They don't allow for new people to come in there. And finally, for the launch of this brand, they had no money for advertising. So everything that had to work for the brand was just the identity and packaging. I'll let Praveen take it from here. Yeah. See, I can do it. Sorry. So this is how the marketplace looks like, right? If you look at all the packaging, it's got like a lot of odd colors, stripes, and things that really don't identify with the category. So we had to create something that's really clutter-breaking and uh, unique. So we had to start with a story. We had to start with an identity. Identity needed to come uh, stem from a story, right? Uh, so when we met our client Subodh, we realized that he's extremely passionate about baking, and uh, he would go about uh, getting the best ingredients, you know, the best um, materials for his dough, and uh, from that came this identity. So if you look at it, it's got like a coat of arms, which is basically a bread cutter and a, a dough uh, kneader. So that's, uh, that's the symbol that we've created. We've got a typeface uh, which is inspired by the shape of the dough. And we put in the positioning statement called Serious About Baking. And that's how we created this identity. So, and post that, we created a mascot, the cereal baker. Is like because really even though we had taken the position of serious about baking, we wanted to introduce some amount of fun. We wanted to break break that staid, boring kind of design that's entire in that category. So we created a mascot and we called him the cereal baker, like a mad guy, right? You, you, it's not something. So typically in, in, in the baking industry or baked products, you see either it's all about organic wheat and those kind of products. We're all talking about health gains, but there was no one who had induced any kind of fun in the category. And with the cereal baker for this brand, we decided to have some fun. So if you actually take a look at the packaging, yeah. it will show you how we've taken the identity and the mascot and taken it through. 
So it's really important for uh, the product to be like you know transparent because the consumer end of the day he needs to see what he's buying, and uh, so if you look at our design, it's like mostly transparent with uh, basic uh, minimal colors. You can have a look at our cereal baker. He's always crazy thinking about breads and how to make them. This is the back of the pack, which uh, we uh, which we decided I mean, it needed to be like really uh, very clear in terms of information when it's made and what it's made of. So what actually happened after doing this? In eight months, Atta Galata, the bread brand, got 12% market share, right? The breads hit the shelves at, you know, Spa Supermarket in May 2014, where the first batch that was put out with the new packaging was sold out in two days flat, without a single piece of advertising. Within eight months, Atta Galata has got an average market share of 12% in modern retail trade, which means it is among the top three brands of bread that is being bought in Bangalore today, all without advertising, just branding, packaging, and of course, a great product offering. And that's what we call packvertising. That's packvertising. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we The so, second case that we want to share with you is uh, how we use design to create emotion. All right. Uh, the example that we'd like to talk about is nationwide. Uh, can anyone tell us, with a brand name like Nationwide? What brand or category or, or what service this could be? It's not biryani, I know you're hungry. <laughs> Pardon? Bank. bank. Well, no, it's not a bank. Anyone else, please? Pardon? Insurance. No, it's not insurance. Property. Comedy. Property, no. So, there you go. So, that was the first problem. Nationwide was actually the name of a, 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 a what do you call, a chain of clinics. All right? It was a chain of medical clinics that were supposed to be opened in, in, in localities. They wanted to have actually a chain. But, so that was our first problem. What is nationwide? Nobody knows, you know, uh, it, it does not necessarily connect back to the category. It doesn't suggest anything about medicine or health or healing. So that was our first challenge as to how to create an identity for a service uh, that has a name with no relevance to the category. Thus. So we had to come up with a very uh, simple solution, which is basically getting the cross back, uh, which stands for medical services. And we had to introduce, we had to slightly alter it to introduce a heart, right? So that's how we created uh, this identity. We went on to introduce a typeface and um, the tagline, the family doctors. So now the other thing is, if you visit any of the clinics, it's usually like, it's like totally emotionless, you know, it's like a lot of blue, there are no instructions, there's no conversation happening. So we said, okay, let's solve this by uh, introducing some really interesting conversations. So I'll just take you through some examples. So the examples that you're going to see is how we actually took the identity and carried it through through the experience of actually going to these clinics. Right? Clinics are normally cold places, they're clinical, there is no emotion, people are there because they're sick, they're always kind of sad, you know, everyone's only thinking about their problems, invariably some child is wailing, but how do you change that, right? If, if you don't want to go to a place feeling sick and going there and feeling even more sick, right? So we wanted to actually create an atmosphere that's a little bit more friendly, right? And, 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 and even, the, even, even the information signages were, were, were like talking to people, it was not like here, you know, collect billing section, you know, give sample over there, you know, it's always like all people are taking your body parts away. Even simple things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, corporate gifting, like, you know, a water bottle, it, it had, you know, things like drink lots of fluids. So here is an example of how you take something that is pretty much straightforward, solve the problem. So we created an identity, we use the plus, which has been used even by Switzerland, right? For And we brought it back and we created a small twist to it to, to add that little emotion and heart. And we carried that through, through the entire retail experience uh, for the brand. 
In one year nationwide opened six clinics and they've already been accepted in Bangalore as a place to go. The identity and uh, the experience contributed a large part to their success because they already had two clinics before they had come to us for the rebranding and uh, 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 I mean the founders got back to us and said it made a huge difference and even uh, you know the sick people didn't feel so sick after all after coming over there. So here is an example where you know we used emotion to, to change the experience you know, uh, with, with a simple straightforward service. Uh, the third case that we're going to talk about uh, is, is a design from a much larger perspective, right? So here is not something that we just physically designed in terms of a logo. Yes, we also did that for the project. But what we'd like to talk about is, is, is how we actually had to conceptualize the whole ecosystem. Uh, so the Weightless project is a project that was conceived uh, and created by Happy. Uh, the idea was very simple. I mean, we wanted to do something that will deliver global change. Uh, I'd like to play a video for you that <coughs> will give you <coughs> a clear understanding of what this project is about. Uh, it, to just give you a clue, one part of the world is fighting with obesity and the other part of the world is fighting with malnutrition. So with the Weightless Project, we wanted to bridge that gap. Can we play the video, please? Move to the next. Obesity is considered to be among the biggest health problems of the 21st century. Yet, at the same time, there's another problem that we really don't see. While millions are dying from being overweight, there are millions dying from being severely undernourished. It's clear, the only way to a healthier world is to bridge the gap between obesity and hunger. And then it hit us. Those who had to lose help those who need to gain. So, the Weightless Project was born. How does it work? People are encouraged to work out and donate calories. These calories are converted to usable funds and then used to help those less fortunate than us. Calorie tracking devices partnering with the project enable users to make these calorie donations. All anyone has to do is register their device on the Weightless Project website and they can start saving lives. Organizations and individuals supporting the cause help monetize these calorie contributions by directly donating funds to the Weightless Project account. The project was launched by Deepak Chopra at the Dreamforce Conference in San Francisco in November 2013. The Weightless Project has received attention from all over the world generating a lot of buzz online, including features on leading blogs and websites. As of today, the project is in talks to get more brands, personalities, apps, and devices on board. Anything you do to get healthy helps the world get healthy. If any of us needed another reason to work out, this is it. So, hello. So here again, uh, the design's like really simple. It's plus and minus, weight gain, weight loss. So we were really inspired by the UNICEF colors, which is gray and blue. We took that forward online on the website, infographics, and other things. So that was so uh, within within a couple of months of the Weightless project being uh, launched, we actually managed to collect ten thousand US dollars and donated it to the victims of the typhoon Haiyan. So the reason why we actually shared this example with you because uh, design uh, over here plays an important role through you know through all layers. One, the concept itself how you can get one community who's suffering from one problem to actually help another community.
to the role of technology you know everybody is talking about wearable devices and tracking calories and stuff like that so how to capitalize on an existing trend and you know use it for social good and finally the identity itself the simplicity in which the logo of the weightless project uh, was conceived and uh, and how everyone who had a device could actually easily plug in to a platform and start contributing from day one the weightless product project has also been uh, has won many awards locally and internationally for its effort the uh, fourth case that we'd like to share with you is uh, designing for the online space so uh, yellow giraffe is a brand that that propagates the sale of toys to children uh, but the kind of toys that possibly uh, people like me grew up with right jigsaw puzzles physical toys uh, not the kind of toys that kids kind of grow up with today kids today are stuck on their dads iPhones and iPads and they're playing interactive games uh, that's probably numbing their senses more than anything else so here was a brand that wants to propagate the use of toys that actually get the hand and body motion the motor senses of children application of intelligence more than just swiping left and right and killing cars and you know smashing people and stuff like that uh, uh, Praveen you might yeah, want to so talk about the identity yeah so uh, so we had to create something simple of if you look at all our identities really simple basic down to earth so we had to take uh, the jigsaw puzzle as an inspiration which is an evergreen game I think that will last like for many years to come so uh, it was inspired by that and here we have it in black and white some collaterals so uh, nowadays it's really important when you design something offline you'll have to really see how it's taken forward in the online medium so logolets, favicons, app icons how do you take it for, uh, on an android phone to an apple phone or a facebook banner so yeah so that's about it uh, the last case that we'd like to share with you uh, is uh, actually a physical product design that we created for uh, the fashion brand Lee uh, and this is a great example how everything can become an interface so Lee has uh, uh, every year they, they, they use their shopping bags as a medium to put out uh, a message uh, ideally a social message and uh, this time around uh, we did this design about two years ago uh, the brief was that Lee said let's let's put a message uh, that talks about recycling right and tell people you know spread the message about how important recycling is so we said hey I mean let's let's break the format a little bit what's the point in putting a message and do one-way communication from a bag to people uh, but let's do something else let's let's make it about interaction so we created a bag uh, and we have a video that will show you what it exactly did audio please give stuff away come on man 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 like this so it was a bag there was a one bag that actually became into 29 different products there wasn't a single shred of the bag that was actually wasted not a single shred I mean even the carry even the carrying strings were shoelaces that you can actually use later um, so this is an example where you you, you, you take an opportunity where you're, you're using the medium and you're making the medium itself the message um, to quote the results, uh, we actually produced this bag uh, in Bangalore for the Lee brand. Uh, the moment we posted the video and the design on our blog, it went viral in 48 hours. Lee UK and Lee Hong Kong actually picked up the design, they got in touch with uh, the head office in India and they actually took the design forward and produced it in these two countries. So that's an example of how you, know, you take an opportunity and turn it around to being more.
Uh, yeah, we spent about 10 months working on this and looking at into every single detail, and that's how we cracked this. So. Then as we speak, we're, we're, we're currently in production for two more bags um, that actually do a lot more than this. And I hopefully you'll see the video online. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, we're known as Happy Creative Services. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. And you, you can follow our work and you can be in touch with us. So we'd like to leave you with one thought. And this is the thing that we believe in. Design is all about problem solving. And add to that a little common sense and you come, and you up, come up with an, with an idea, an idea, an idea that, that kind of changes, changes life in small, in small ways, ways, but definitely in a way, in a way that, that makes things better. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it, folks. Have fun at lunch.